SpaceX just shocked Russia and NASA. With this insane moon-based trick, Russia's space chief went silent. NASA engineers couldn't believe their eyes. SpaceX just revealed they're literally crashing 50-meter starships onto the moon, then using airbags to tip them sideways into instant megahabitats. One starship equals 1,860 cubic meters of living space. That's 10 times bigger than the entire International Space Station, for one one-hundredth the cost. But here's what terrified space agencies worldwide. What if this isn't about the moon at all? Let's dive right in. Picture this. Three days after SpaceX's announcement, Russia's Deputy Prime Minister Yuri Borisov storms into an emergency Roscosmos meeting. The transcript, leaked months later, reveals his exact words. If Americans establish permanent lunar dominance with technology we cannot replicate, our space program dies overnight. The numbers were devastating. Russia's moon-based plan, 15 years, $150 billion, six cosmonauts maximum. SpaceX's plan, two years, $10 billion, 20 plus astronauts living permanently. The math didn't just favor SpaceX, it obliterated every competitor. But here's what terrified Moscow most. They had no counter strategy, none. Within 48 hours, China's space agency held their own crisis meeting. Internal documents show they immediately redirected $40 billion toward emergency lunar capabilities. Their timeline? Accelerated by 10 years, but still arriving after SpaceX establishes dominance. NASA's reaction was even more telling. Instead of celebrating American innovation, they panicked about losing relevance in their own country's space program. But nobody understood how SpaceX would actually pull this off until the leaked engineering documents surfaced. Here's where it gets insane. Traditional space engineering says you can't safely tip a 120-ton, 50-meter rocket without massive ground equipment. SpaceX said, watch us. The airbag system sounds like cartoon physics, but the engineering is genius. Picture a 30-meter Kevlar balloon that inflates to cushion a skyscraper falling sideways. The bag weighs just 200 kilograms but handles forces equivalent to a building collapse. The process is terrifyingly simple. Deploy the airbag, inflate using stored compressed gas, retract one landing leg, and gravity does the rest. The entire rocket gently tips like a falling tree onto the cushioned surface. But here's what nobody expected. What happens after the landing changes everything. Within 72 hours, astronauts transform that horizontal tube into a multi-level space city. The main fuel tank becomes living quarters for 12 people. The oxidizer tank becomes laboratories and workshops. The header tanks become emergency shelters. Each section pressurizes independently, meaning one breach doesn't kill everyone. It's like having multiple space stations built into one vehicle. The same tanks that carried them to the moon become their radiation shielding once covered with lunar dirt. It's engineering disguised as simplicity, but there's a hidden problem nobody talks about. Lunar dust isn't Earth dust. It's microscopic glass shards created by 4 billion years of meteorite impacts. Each particle carries an electrostatic charge and clings to everything like magnetic needles. During Apollo missions, this moon glitter nearly killed multiple astronauts. Their suits were compromised within days. SpaceX's base needs to operate for years. The solution involves ultrasonic cleaning systems, electromagnetic dust removal, and specially designed fabrics that repel charged particles. One management failure turns the dream base into a death trap. But even more dangerous than the dust is what SpaceX discovered during their secret partnership negotiations. Behind closed doors, SpaceX isn't working alone. Japan's JAXA provides advanced robotics. India's ISRO contributes low-cost launch capabilities. Even competitors like Blue Origin supply specialized equipment. Why? Because the technical challenges are so immense that no single organization can solve them alone. It's cooperation disguised as competition. The European Space Agency quietly provides life support expertise. South Korea contributes advanced manufacturing. Australia offers deep space communication networks. But here's the twist. These partnerships aren't just about moon bases. Every challenge solved on the lunar surface directly applies to Mars colonization. Tipping starships sideways? Same technique works on Mars. 
Converting fuel tanks to habitats? Even easier with Mars's thicker atmosphere. Growing food in artificial soil? Mars regolith is actually more fertile. The moon base isn't SpaceX's end goal. It's their $10 billion Mars training facility. Every lesson learned, every system perfected, every problem solved brings human settlement of Mars one step closer. But there's something bigger at stake than Mars colonization. Those permanently shadowed craters at the lunar south pole contain billions of tons of water ice, not just for drinking, for rocket fuel production. Water splits into hydrogen and oxygen, the exact propellant Starship needs. A lunar refueling station cuts Mars mission costs by 90%. Whoever controls lunar ice production controls the future of space exploration. China's Chang'e missions are mapping identical locations. Russia's Luna program targets the same craters. Europe's Prospector 1 launches next year with similar goals. This isn't exploration. It's a resource grab disguised as science. SpaceX's schedule makes competitors desperate. First unmanned Starship landing, 2026. First crewed mission, 2027. Operational base with 20 astronauts, 2029. NASA's timeline may be a small outpost by 2035. China's timeline, first crewed landing by 2030, permanent base by 2040. Russia's timeline, under review since 2022. Here's the final piece. SpaceX's Starship production rate is accelerating faster than anyone realizes. Current plans call for one launch every two weeks by 2025. That means 26 Starships per year could reach the moon. Imagine 10 Starships tipped sideways and connected by pressurized tunnels. That's not a moon base. That's a lunar city housing 200 plus people, a permanent human settlement on another world. But only if the airbag trick actually works under real conditions, 20 astronauts confined together for months in a space smaller than most shopping malls, 240,000 miles from help. What happens when personalities clash, when cultural differences create conflict, when someone has a psychological breakdown? SpaceX's solution involves careful crew selection and rotation schedules, but there's no backup plan if things go wrong. No emergency evacuation beyond the next scheduled Starship arrival. The crew becomes their own government, police force, and judicial system. Democracy meets survival in an alien world, and nobody knows how that experiment ends. Lunar seismic data shows unexplained underground structures. Satellite imagery reveals geometric formations that don't match natural geology. Radio telescopes detect signals from the lunar far side with no known source, probably just measurement errors and cosmic background radiation. Probably. But what if Moon Base Alpha's inhabitants discover something that changes humanity's understanding of our place in the universe? The protocols for such discoveries exist, and they're classified. Whoever establishes permanent lunar presence first doesn't just control space exploration, they control Earth's future. Lunar mining could crash precious metals markets overnight. Helium-3 fusion reactors could make oil obsolete. Zero-gravity manufacturing could revolutionize every industry. More importantly, lunar missile platforms could neutralize any Earth-based military threat. The Outer Space Treaty prohibits military bases on celestial bodies, but says nothing about research stations with defensive capabilities. But here's what keeps the scientific community awake. What if we're not alone up there? Recent data suggests previous intelligence may have established lunar presence. The evidence is circumstantial, the implications staggering. SpaceX's moon base might not be humanity's first attempt at lunar colonization. It might be our second. So here we are. SpaceX just broke every rule in the space game with a trick so simple, it left world superpowers scrambling to catch up. A giant rocket tipped sideways by airbags, becoming humanity's stepping stone to the stars. But this isn't just about moon bases or Mars colonies. This is about the moment our species stops being earthbound forever. The moment we become something bigger than we ever imagined. Russia's panicking. China's redirecting billions. NASA's rewriting their entire playbook. And somewhere in Hawthorne, California, Elon Musk is probably already sketching plans for lunar cities we can't even comprehend yet. The airbag trick works. The engineering is sound. The timeline is aggressive but achievable. Which means in just five years, humans could be living permanently on another world for the first time in our species history. 
The real question isn't whether SpaceX can pull this off. It's what happens to humanity when they do. When Earth stops being our only home, when the moon becomes our second planet, when Mars becomes inevitable, what do you think? Are we ready to become a multi-planetary species? Or are we moving too fast toward a future we don't fully understand? Let me know your thoughts below. And if this blew your mind like it did mine, we've got the full breakdown of SpaceX's impossible Raptor 3 engine coming next week. Trust me, you won't want to miss that one. SpaceX just made a move so insane that NASA engineers are calling it impossible. After 500 plus perfect landings, they're killing landing zone one, their most successful pad ever. But here's the kicker. They're doing this right as they plan to launch 120 rockets per year. What secret technology forced this shocking decision? Let's dive right in. Friday, 11.43 a.m. Eastern, Crew-11 blasts off from Kennedy Space Center, looking like just another routine ISS mission. Four astronauts, standard Dragon capsule, same launch pad NASA's used for decades. But 8.8 .8 miles away, SpaceX engineers were already dismantling equipment they'd never use again. The Falcon 9 booster touched down at landing zone one with surgical precision. It's 500th perfect landing at this legendary site. The crowd cheered. NASA celebrated another flawless mission. But what they didn't know was that they just witnessed the funeral of the most successful landing pad in space history. Why would SpaceX destroy their golden goose at the peak of its success? Here's the problem that's been driving NASA engineers crazy for months. SpaceX just filed paperwork to launch 120 Falcon 9 rockets per year from Cape Canaveral. That's not a typo. 120 launches from a single location. To put this in perspective, the entire world launched 186 rockets in 2022. SpaceX wants to launch 120 from one facility. The logistics are insane. Every single landing at LZ-1 creates a nightmare. SpaceX has to transport a 15-story rocket booster across 8.8 .8 miles of Florida highways, through traffic, past curious onlookers, back to the launch complex for refurbishment. That's 120 massive transport operations per year, 120 opportunities for delays, 120 chances for catastrophic failure. But the real kicker? Each landing creates sonic booms that rattle windows for miles. Local residents were already complaining at 50 launches per year. What happens when that number more than doubles? According to insider sources, the breakthrough came during a classified SpaceX meeting in late 2024. Engineers were stuck on the transport problem when someone asked a simple question. What if we didn't need landing zone one at all? The room went silent. LZ-1 was SpaceX's crown jewel, their proof of concept, their tourist attraction. But then someone pulled up Starship's Mechazilla tower design and everything clicked. What if every Falcon 9 could launch and land on the same pad? What if they could eliminate the 8.8 .8 mile nightmare entirely? What if turnaround times dropped from weeks to hours? NASA engineers called it technically impossible. The precision required to land a rocket on its launch pad seemed beyond current technology, but SpaceX had been secretly testing something that would make that assessment look foolish. Here's what SpaceX developed in complete secrecy. A guidance system so precise it can land a 15-story rocket on a platform the size of a basketball court after traveling through space. We're talking about accuracy that makes Olympic marksmen look clumsy. But guidance was just the beginning. The real breakthrough was infrastructure redesign. SpaceX quietly retrofitted their launch pads to handle both launches and landings. New blast deflectors capable of withstanding multiple rocket engines. Reinforced concrete rated for impacts that would destroy normal structures. Advanced fire suppression systems that activate in milliseconds. They essentially built two facilities in one and nobody noticed. Here's something that didn't make headlines. SpaceX has already been testing return to launch site landings at their private facilities in Texas. Not at Cape Canaveral, that would have tipped their hand, but at remote test sites, they've been perfecting this technology for over a year. The results were staggering. 
Turnaround times drop from two to three weeks to just 72 hours. Transportation costs eliminated. Logistics headaches gone. Risk of highway accidents, zero. Suddenly, 120 launches per year didn't seem impossible. It seemed inevitable. Now here's the twist that proves this was all orchestrated. SpaceX could have easily landed that Crew-11 booster back at the launch site. They had the technology. They had clearance. The weather was perfect. But they chose LZ-1 for one final performance. Why? Because they wanted the world to witness the end of an era. They wanted the contrast to be crystal clear. Old way versus new way. Transportation versus efficiency. Past versus future. It was pure theater, and every space agency in the world fell for it. That new FAA rule requiring return to launch site landings? SpaceX didn't just influence that regulation. They essentially wrote it. They've been lobbying behind the scenes for months, arguing that centralized operations are safer, more efficient, and better for communities. The FAA agreed, but with one condition, prove the technology works flawlessly. Crew 11's mission was the final validation test. The moment that Booster touched down at LZ-1, the old system's fate was sealed. Here's another piece that makes perfect sense now. SpaceX's lease for landing zones 1 and 2 expires in July 2025. That's less than 12 months away. Renewal would cost millions. Upgrading for increased traffic would cost tens of millions more. Instead of throwing money at outdated infrastructure, SpaceX chose to revolutionize their entire operation. Why pay rent when you can own the future? This transformation isn't really about Falcon 9. It's preparation for Starship. Every return-to-launch site landing is training for Mars missions where there are no backup landing sites, no transport trucks, no second chances. Mechazilla's catch-and-release system represents the ultimate evolution. Launch and land on the same tower. Zero transportation time, instant refueling capability, hour-long turnarounds between flights. By mastering this with Falcon 9, SpaceX is building the operational expertise they'll need when humans depend on Starship for survival on Mars. Look at SpaceX's trajectory. Over 500 successful landings have given them unmatched expertise in rocket recovery. Landing Zone 1 served its purpose. 